In several previous videos, linked below in the description, we examined the power of frequency separation. This incredibly powerful tool is often unused in the workflows of persons doing regular photography as well as astrophotography. And yet, frequency separation can be used to push sharpening tools such as the unsharp mass, clarity, and the high pass filter to new heights. And it can also be used to divide out and edit very specific information within an image so that weak information in an image can be separated out and corrected without over-processing other information. So what more can you do with frequency separation, you might be thinking? Well, today, we're going to push the frequency separation game even higher. You might think of today's video as advanced advanced frequency separation, because we're going to use it to pull unprecedented levels of detail from the mere nine hours of information that I have here on the Eagle Nebula after it was shot with an SCT. And we're going to use frequency separation to address the washed out color. So, in the information to the left, you are seeing the combined LRGB information of a multi-night shot that I have been working on of the Eagle Nebula. I've been shooting this with a Player One Ares M mono camera and the Player One filter wheel using ZWO LRGB filters. And the telescope was a Celestron 203mm or 8-inch SCT with a reducer corrector on it, which gives it a focal length of 1240 millimeters and an F ratio of 6.3. I've been working on this shot for about three weeks now, and unfortunately, it's the shortest time of summer, so nights are only about five and a half hours long. And that's been further complicated by a lot of rainy nights and cloudy nights and a full moon on top of that. So in total, after all this time, I've only gotten 9.33 hours of integration time, or nine hours and 20 minutes. I've actually gotten about 12 hours of imaging time, but I call my subs pretty aggressively. Only the best are acceptable. I've already gone through a fair bit of my typical workflow. So in PixInsight, I've used the Blur Exterminator to correct and sharpen the image, merge the RGB plates, stretch the histogram on the luminance and RGB plates, run the Noise Exterminator on the luminance and RGB plates, and then exported everything over to Affinity Photo, where I have applied frequency cultivation techniques such as the Orton effect to the information and done what I can to further enrich the color. The strength of the image is that there is okay sharpness, but the weakness is I feel the sharpness could be pushed a lot further and the color is washed out. There just frankly is not yet enough color information in this image. But the good news is by using frequency separation, there is a way to correct both these things. Let's start by improving the sharpness. Most of an LRGB image's information on sharpness and definition is in the luminance plate. So I'm going to go down to that luminance plate, duplicate it, and drag it to the very top of the layers. By the way, if you were working in color, you could use a similar procedure, but you're just going to have the one plate, your RGB plate, because that's what color does. Color doesn't have a luminance channel. It just combines RGB information. I'm going to change the composite method back to normal which is the default composite method and makes this plate opaque. Now all we can see is the luminance channel. Then I'm going to duplicate the luminance plate twice for a total of three luminance plates, and I'm going to label each one, one L fine, one L medium, and one L coarse. For fine, medium, and coarse high frequency information, just to keep things unconfusing while I'm working with them, I'm going to make the luminance medium and luminance coarse layers invisible, and then open up the frequency separation tool on the fine luminance information. Once the frequency separation tool is open, I'm going to drag the view slider all the way to the right so I can see the entire luminance fine plate. And then I'm going to drag the radius slider on the tool over just enough that I can make out the fine detail in the luminance plate. And then I'm going to apply the frequency separation tool. This will destroy the L fine plate, or rather, rip it in half, dividing it into its high and low frequency information. The low frequency information is where blurry shadow and light information are, and that's not needed, so I'm going to delete that. That leaves me only with the high frequency plate, which contains the fine high frequency information. It's like an outline of the very finest detail from that luminance channel. I'm going to label that fine high frequency make that layer invisible, and now do the same process with the L coarse plate. Except this time, once I have opened up the frequency separation tool, I'm going to pull the radius slider over a bit further to reveal more of the definition hidden within the Eagle Nebula. Then I'll apply the frequency separation tool to divide out the low frequency from the high information, 
and once again delete the low frequency plates and then label the high frequency plates as medium high frequency. And then finally, on the luminance course plates, I'm going to run the frequency separation tool one more time and do the exact same procedure, except I'm going to pull the radius slider all the way to the right. And now you can see all the detail and definition within the Eagle Nebula revealed. And when I activate the frequency separation tool, the plate is ripped in half, dividing out the high frequency information from the blurry shadow and light information. And I'll delete the low frequency information, it's not necessary, and relabel the high frequency plate coarse high frequency. The composite or blend mode for each of our new high frequency layers should be at linear light. That's the default composite mode for the high frequency information so it should start that way but in case you accidentally changed it and the high frequency information doesn't seem to be applying correctly to the rest of the image but just be sure that your composite mode is on linear light. Now I have three layers of sharpness to apply to my image of the Eagle Nebula one containing very fine definition, one medium definition, and one coarse definition. And I'm going to selectively apply each of these layers to the image to carefully enhance the sharpness of the Eagle Nebula so that even though I don't yet have enough integration time on the nebula, I can improve what's already there. By the way, you can use this technique to improve the sharpness of your image even if you have great information time. This is a technique with multiple applications in multiple situations. I'll start by applying the fine high frequency information. So I'll make the coarse and medium layers invisible and the fine high frequency information visible. I'm using the Affinity Photo Editor and on the right of each layer there is a visibility checkbox with a little whitish circle in it. If you click that circle off, the layer will become invisible. If you use GIMP or Photoshop, it's probably about the same. One of the great things about Affinity Photo is if you know Photoshop, then you can very easily switch over to Affinity Photo and vice versa. The layout and power of the two applications are very similar. Just one of them doesn't have a ridiculous price tag. All right, enough said. Let's get back to editing. Now with the fine high frequency information visible, I'm going to pull the opacity slider all the way down to zero then slowly pull the opacity slider back up with the goal of applying as much fine sharpness information to the image as I can without making the image look gritty. And in particular, I want to enhance the center of the image, the region around the pillars of creation and the pyramid just above it. This is an iterative process. I find the best way to go about this is drag the opacity slider very low and then very high push to what you think is a little too far and then a little too low and keep slowly dialing in is just about the right amount of opacity within the image. As you work on this, don't just watch your target in the center, but look all around the image. Because if you over apply high frequency information, regions of the image can start to look gritty. However, the very fine information also has a very light touch, so we can push it pretty high. And in the end, we seem to be able to get away with 57% application that really brings out the pillars and the pyramid and introduces dramatic touches to the shadows throughout the rest of the image. Now let's apply the medium high frequency information. When I click on the medium high frequency information, you can see immediately that it has a much stronger impact on the image than the fine information. So this information will be applied to the image with a lighter touch. As before, the goal is going to be to enhance the shadows, further define and enhance the sharpness, and really emphasize dramatic shadow within this beautiful nebula. And in the end, 45% opacity on the medium information appears to be just right for this nebula. Now we'll do this one more time with the coarse information. Take note that we progressed from fine information to medium, then to coarse information. And as the appropriate level of opacity was found for each layer of high frequency information, that layer was left on. We need to leave the layers on as we work because we are fundamentally applying the information to the layer below it. We apply a layer of fine high frequency information, almost like a layer of paint over an image. And then we apply a layer of medium high frequency information 
like an etching of further detail below that. And then finally, we'll apply the coarse high frequency information like a hard engraving of detail at the foundation so that the fine, medium, and coarse information each builds synergistically one upon the other. So I'll turn on the coarse information and then once again go to the opacity slider, move it all the way down, and then slowly dial it up until just enough of its information is added to the image to enhance it. Now there are tremendous differences in dynamic range or brightness throughout this image. Above right is very dark and lower left is pretty dark. And at the core of the nebula where the open star cluster is, there is a lot of illumination. This means that the way the coarse high frequency information will look in the image is going to differ throughout the image. It's going to appear to have a lighter touch in the brighter areas than in the darker areas. I'm going to aim to apply just enough of it to make the lighter areas look good without overwhelming the darker areas. And when that's done, I can go back and paint in a mask in the darker areas to partially reduce the effect of the high frequency information in those areas so that those areas of the image don't come to looking gritty and coarse. The coarse high frequency layer contains a lot of information and has a powerful effect on the image. So, in the end, only 15% opacity is required. Now oh, it's actually the fine high frequency information that's a little over applied in the upside down stardust pyramid just over the pillars. So I'm going to lighten up its effect just in that region by selecting the Erase tool, setting the flow to 20% and hardness to zero to make a nice soft brush. By erasing out some of the fine high frequency information just from that pyramid and the darkest regions to the left and right of it. All I have to do is hold down the left mouse button while I pass the circle over those areas and it reduces the impact of the fine high frequency information there. I'll just touch up some of the other darkest areas of the image as well. Now the image is looking pretty good, but the next thing to do is touch up that weak color. The problem is, there just is not enough color information yet in this image. And the next time I shoot the Eagle Nebula, I need to just shoot RGB and leave out the luminance channel to really enhance the color information. But for now, I have to build with what is there. So it's not like I can just put a vibrance and saturation tool up here and crank those up. Because if I just ram up the vibrance and saturation sliders, it'll lead to saturation clipping, which will introduce color noise and color artifacts into the image. What I have to do is find some way to actually put more color information into the image. Fortunately, that can easily be accomplished with frequency separation. Let's go back to the base information. At the very bottom of the layers, beneath the luminance plate, there's an RGB plate. I'm going to duplicate that RGB plate and drag it to near the top but below all the high frequency layers we just created. Once it's in position at the top, I'm going to make that layer visible and apply a label to it. In this case, since I want the color information from the RGB here, I'm just going to call that label looking for color. And when I make it visible, it doesn't look good because all that fine, medium and coarse high frequency information has been applied to this unprocessed RGB layer. So that adds to the RGB layer's own high frequency information, creating too much definition, leading to a dark, gritty image. However, it's a non-issue. What we need is the low frequency information. When we get rid of the high frequency information, the problems will vanish. Now, we're going to run the frequency separation tool on the RGB layer and extract the information that we're after. On the high frequency tool, I'll move the radius slider to 100 pixels because I want to remove all the high frequency information from the low frequency information. Then I'll delete the high frequency layer. We're not going to need it. With the RGB layer's high frequency information gone, we can see the effect of the fine, medium, and coarse high frequency layers over it. They give it some detail. And with the low frequency layer set at a normal screen so that we cannot see the information below it, I'll open up a curves tool. Drag the top right of the diagonal line and drag it to the right of the graph representing the light curve. This essentially stretches the histogram, brightening the colors of the low frequency information. Then I'll adjust the individual red, green, and blue channels to enhance the color within that information. I want to find the richer reds and the icier blues. 
and at the same time preserve the shadow detail within the image. When I have the curve adjusted where I want it with sufficient brightness and enriched color, it's time to change the composite mode on the low frequency RGB information so that it can apply that precious low frequency information to the layers below, thus adding its color to the foundation of the image. As is so often the case, the soft light composite mode will be the one that does the job best. It pulls down darks and enhances bright, having a very pleasing effect on contrast, and not just in luminance values, but also in color values, so that it adds color to color in very beautiful ways. However, the effect of this composite mode is strong, so I'll reduce its strength with the opacity slider. 47% opacity seems to work quite well. There are some more steps required to complete this image, mainly related to adjusting the color temperature and shifting the HSL just a little. Also, the stars have to be added back, and due to the unusual dynamic range of this image, they cannot be added back in the ordinary way, at least not to get the best stars. But, how those things are done is a topic for a new series of videos that I'm going to be putting together very shortly, which will teach my entire LRGB workflow from start to finish. In the meantime, here's the final image, portraying the full effect of sharpness enhancement that can be obtained by lifting fine, medium, and coarse layers of high-frequency information from a luminance plate, and by pulling the low-frequency information out of an RGB plate so that its color can be specifically applied to the rest of the information. I hope you enjoyed this video and find the methods in here to be useful for you and provide new tools that you can apply to the improvements of the development of your own astrophoto images. And if you have any thoughts or observations, please leave them in the comments section below. Thank you for watching, and if you've already subscribed, thank you for helping this channel to grow. And if not, please take a moment to like and subscribe. It's always appreciated, and it only takes a moment. Now, get out there, have a blast doing astrophotography, and shoot that sky.